Hello and welcome to this video. And this video is the second episode of What's in My Car. This is the bit where you shout, and I need you to do it right now. You have to say, what's in your car, Andy? And what I do is I say, this is in my car. And I tell you about the album that I'm listening to this week in the car. I always have one album in the car, and I like to have it on for the whole week. If the album's not very good, I tend to then change it. If I don't feel like I want to listen to it. But when an album stays there for a week, I know that it's a great album. Okay, now the album I've got in the car this week is actually a little box set. It's a brilliant little box set, really brilliantly priced. And it has five Earth, Wind and Fire albums on. And these are the albums that cover the period on Columbia Records from 1974 through to 1979. Now, for those of you who don't know about Earth, Wind and Fire, they are a very funky, soul-y, um, rhythm and blues, funky pop band with like... Um, um, African and jazz overtones. They're one of my favourite bands of all time. Um, they first signed in 1971 to Warner Brothers and they did some classic funky, heavy funk albums, um, which are a mixture of, I would say, Sly Stone with this sort of vocal harmonies that comes from something like Fifth Dimension, you know, like Aquarius, that type of thing. They put this beautiful sound together. There is um, a focus on sort of Afrocentric funk. Um, and they do two albums on Warner Brothers. Um, then um, they do the soundtrack to the um, sort of cult. Um, it's total black exploitation feel, probably the original one, which is Sweet Badass's Sweet Song, is that the title of it, with Mario Van Peebles, which is a very strange album. And then they move over to Columbia Records and they take this Afrocentric funky jazz vibe and they move more and more towards commerciality, which you would think would make them not as good. You know, there's so many, this happened to so many funk bands in the 70s, so many fusion bands in the 70s. But in Earth, Wind and Fire's case, they just build to some of the greatest pop records ever made. And we all know Got To Get You In Life or Shining Star or Boogie Wonderland. You know, all these are classic records, fantasy Classic pop records, and you hear them on the radio all the time. But under that is some heavy, heavy playing and heavy composition that is coming out of the funk and jazz rock fusion world. Earth, Wind & Fire are incredible players. It's a big band with a brass section. Some of these albums are then augmented almost by the orchestra. Um, it's, it's quite... Um, there's an undercurrent of sort of um, Afro sci-fi that I think has come from Parliament Funkadelic, which I enjoy very much, mixed with the sort of the ancient esoteric ideas of Egyptian and African um, uh, sort of civilizations. And it is quite proggy, right? But it's very commercial at the same time. Um, Earth, Wind and Fire know how to write a pop record, okay? So, as I said, this one um, covers the Columbia... Um, recordings and it starts in 1974 when they're moving towards commerciality and it goes right up to their biggest hits. It's it's so cheap, it's so uh, well priced that if you don't um, have any Earth or Winter Fire, go and get this right away because it really does cover their sort of classic albums. And the albums on here is, is That's the Way of the World, which I think came out in 74 or 75. And then the, the Double Live Gratitude, which is the album I'm going to be talking about on this video. That's the one I've had in the car. That's followed by Spirit, which is a classic Earth, Wind & Fire album. And then All In All, which is even more classic. That's the one that's got fantasy on it. And then um, in 1979, they came out with I Am, which is my favourite Earth, Wind & Fire album. It's one of the most commercial, but it's one of the most heavy. They, they have just um, got their sound and they have just brought that sound to a sort of um, artistic and yet commercial peak. Um, also at this time, they brought out the Greatest Hits album. And the Greatest Hits had a couple of tracks on it that aren't on any albums. I think um, Got To Get You Into Life is, is one of those tracks. Um, and that is, along with, say, Queen's Greatest Hits, is one of the Greatest Hits albums of all time. And it's the one that everybody has. I've got it. And you need to have that one as well. Anyway, um, on here... Is an is a it's a single CD, but it's a double live album called Gratitude, and I've had that in the car. And there's a reason why I, why I want to talk about that this on my channel now. What I'm hoping is, if I hold this long enough, that uh, YouTube will know that this is the thumbnail that I, I want. So I'm going to look cool now for the thumbnail. 
If not, I'll do a screen grab of that because, because you know, I've got my new camera today, as you may have noticed, and all my lights and, uh, you know, it's, I, I've, I've combed my hair every bit, and, you know, I've had a wash and all that bit. <laughs> Change my clothes. Anyway, shall we get onto this album and stop whittling away? So, this came out in 1975, and so it's at as they're moving into that commercial period, but it also covers the period running up to that, right? If you put this on, this combines um, a ton of live stuff with some studio stuff. So you get studio and live, and the studio stuff is brilliant. If you buy the CD version, you want to get the one in the box set, you also get a bonus melody uh, where they do Serpentine, Fire, Saturday Night, Can't Hide Your Love and Reasons. And this is from a 1978 concert that they did with Natalie Cole. And that's fantastic. So this, I mean, you could, if you, if you see a copy of this, grab it. Because this is a brilliant representation of Earth, Wind and Fire. And I tell you why. This band is a band of virtuosos, right? They can play jazz rock fusion uh, as good as anybody else. Verdi White is one of my favourite bass players and always plays incredibly inventive bass players. His brother, Fred White, is just so tight on the drums. It's so tight and direct. It's like um, he's like the Phil Rudd of funk. It's all there. He never misses anything, but it's so tight. Maurice White is the leader of the band, of course, and he's playing percussion and thumb piano and kalimba and all this stuff and doing the sort of main vocals with the incredible Phil Bailey that we all know from Easy Lover that has got the most virtuoso, high, you know, falsetto voice with his huge backing, you know, a vocal choir behind it and then the big rhythm section which is so tight and funky the chord progressions are beautiful the hooks are beautiful one of the things i like about earth within fire is sometimes they'll just sit on the groove like james brown or parliament funk and you get a groove with a vocal but actually if you listen to a lot of their big hits these are properly constructed songs with twisting chord progressions that are changing key and modulated. And in fact, changing key and modulated in a way which we we seldom see in pop music. You know, the, the thing that's often, um, you know, where people glorify Steely Dan, for me, that pop band that has got the jazz rock influences and the incredible chord changes and the incredible playing, for me, my Steely Dan is Earth, Wind and Fire. I love Steely Dan, but I love Earth, Wind and Fire. Right, I absolutely love them. They, they, they are as funky as can be. They can go right down to P-Funk and they can play beautiful ballads. And another thing is I usually hate funk bands when they play a ballad. And sometimes even Earth, Wind and Fire, I can think, oh, I could do with that with this one. But um, when they're at their best, and I would, I would say that's like a track like That's the Way of the World, that ballad, they seem to find some beauty in, in the melodies. It doesn't just hang around the usual chord progressions and key changes it's absolutely fantastic stuff right so this album is programmed sorry this album that's the box set that it comes in shall i hold them both up because that might that might help as well shall i get in the middle right like that i might go for this one i've got the eyebrow in on that so anyway <laughs> this album is set out like a live gig. When you put it on, it's got the feeling of a live gig and the production is beautiful. Everything's clear and tight and yet you still get the feeling that you're in an auditorium and in the, in the audience. Sometimes live albums are too echoey, too reverby for me, too muddy. I like to be able to hear what's going on and this is tight and it's warm and it's funky and you feel like you're in the room and you feel the band come on and this band tease you and they tease you with the jazz fusion with the jazz rock right they come in and it starts to just open up very slowly and the bands are hitting grooves and then they're bringing in solos and some of the solo on in on here is up with headhunters it's up with anybody from the jazz rock era that's properly funky and playing right they never fall into the muzak trap and the reason is is because when they go towards commerciality they understand a hook they understand a pop song and so many of the jazz fusion guys that were trying to have a hit record in the late 70s didn't understand the pop hook earth wind and fire understand it and this album never lets up it's either hitting you with with absolutely classic hits so what do we get first up on here so the um we get um there's an introduction from perry jones comes out and introduces the band 
And then we go into Africano, which goes into power. And this is like a jazz fusion sort of build up. And then we do go in and to yearning and learning, heavy funk, um, devotion, heavy funk, sun goddess. Now we're really getting into the heavy fusion. It's that mix. Then we get a hit, Reasons. Um, and then we get to Shining Star. Shining Star was their first massive hit. They had hit records in every every record pretty much once they signed to Columbia. And when we say hit records, we're talking tri triple platinum album sales. We're talking top of the chart single sales, right? So this album, I think, this album went, to, I think it went into the Billboard 200. I think it went to number one, right? This sold millions and millions of albums. In the 70s, people were hearing the jazz fusion on this. We could talk about Headhunters and Weather Report and Return to Forever. But in terms of hearing this music that I love and I assume you love, this is where most people heard it with Earth, Wind and Fire. And it's the real deal. Um, as this album comes in, we get some studio um, tracks on here. Um, Can't Hide Your Love is one of them, a uh, singer song. And this is where you get the sort of studio sound of... Um, Earth, Wind of Fire. The early albums really sound like a band, but as they move through the 70s, the production, the budgets they must have had, and the production's absolutely incredible. It's so tight, and you feel... If you listen to something like Fantasy, it, 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 it seems unearthly to me when I hear that record. When it comes on the radio, and I hear what's happening with the chord changes and the harmony, the way the track's moving, how perfect everything is. And when you listen to Verdin White's bass lines, he hasn't developed a bass line and got the perfect bass line and he's playing it. You could feel that he's still improvising, exploring the, the, um, the possibilities like a jazz musician of that bass line. That's why I love his playing so much. He's so funky, but he's so melodic. And so he'll, he'll like do a verse chorus. And then when he comes back to the verse, you don't necessarily get the same bass line. You go, boom, absolutely incredible and the way it matches up with the drums fred white i think is the drummer well there's a number of drummers credited on this album so i'm not too sure i mean you know i might make these videos have the album in the car and i'm pulling a lot of this out of my head on the spot but um um the way the rhythm section works together is absolutely fantastic right so when i do these little chats i do want to for a little bit of criticism to these albums if I can I don't want to just be coming in here gushing about these albums but I'm only going to bring an album like this to you if I've had it in the car and go well I'm loving this so if you love the stuff I love you're probably going to go well I'll try that out and uh, remember if you are a progger right and you want to go towards the funk maybe you've got a secret a secret love of the funk right you know a lot of proggers do and yes was very funky king crimson could be funky gentle giant are like the earth wind and fire of prog aren't they <laughs> if you think about it all the same elements are there now this is commercial and it's easy to listen to but underneath there is really some twisty turny incredible um extravagant compositions, let me say. And if you get this album, because of the way the live gig runs, it almost feels like you're listening to one big prog funk epic. It just never lets up. It just keeps going and keeps opening out. And they go off down tangents. Now, I was going to criticise them again, and I'm finding it really hard. This is a brilliant album. I've never spoken about Earth, Wind & Fire on this channel before. I would love to rank the albums. There's a lot of them. And once they get past 1981 and 1982, I'm lost. I know the 70s ones. I actually don't know the, the um, Warner Brothers album so well. And I was listening to the debut album. And it's almost like you feel you're listening to the beginnings of hip hop. Um, the, the type of groove that's on that album in 1971 and then I looked at the, who sampled this album, and it's so many hip hop artists have sampled this album. So I need to explore those first three albums a little bit more. I know these albums pretty well, and a couple of the uh, like faces I know that album pretty well. Uh, and then after that, I, I I lose them. You know, as most bands go into the eighties, you know, it's very it's very it's very rare that um, a seventies funk artist manages to traverse the 80s correctly. Um, 
as I was um, driving, uh, I just dropped the kids at school, and driving back home, I thought I'll do that video now. And I, on the radio came Lydell Ritchie all night long. And I love it. <laughs> I love that song and it's so cheesy, but it's so well written, Lionel Richie. Now, of course, you know, Lionel Richie was formerly in um, the Commodores and the Commodores are like this sort of Earth, Wind and Fire, Ohio players called the gang style band originally. Brickhouse is one of the classic funk tracks of all time. Um, and Lionel Richie was able to take that and because he had a hit with Once, Twice, Three Times a Lady, he was able to forge something else out of that. I don't remember Earth and Wind and Fire in the 80s. I know they had hit records. There was hit records. But I didn't, I didn't, um, they didn't register with me. The Earth, Wind and Fire are entirely a, a 70s band. And I think if I was to criticise them, they lay the groundworks for disco. They are the band that goes from this sort of jazz fusion, funky, Afro-conscious, early 70s funk, you know, that sort of Curtis Mayfield, Gil Scott hair, and they're in that territory to start off with a little bit. And the early um, Funkadelic albums, like the, there's a sound on the first album that sounds like the uh, early Funkadelic albums, a sort of reverby psychedelic sounds, but the, I've got to say, the first Earth, Wind and Fire album is way better than the first. <laughs> the first Funkadelic album, which is a really strange, psychedelic, trippy album. Uh, which is sort of like the funk end of Band of Gypsies, but mixed by people who are incredibly stoned, you know. I've always, always had problems with Funkadelic's first few albums. Maggot Brains is... <laughs> um, I have a problem with P-Funk, right? I really do. I, I wish I loved it all, but I don't. Um, it, it lacks a musical sensibility, all the other stuff is there, you know, the look and the lines and the sounds. So often with P-Funk, it's there, but they lack this sort of heavy musical thing that you get when you listen to like Headhunters. Earth, Wind and Fire have that for me as well. Um, so in the early 70s, we get this um, sort of Afrocentric, funky, um, you know, um, black consciousness funk, which I love moving towards commerciality. And by the time we get to 75, 76, they are really laying the groundworks for disco. But I think when disco is happening, they are like one of the biggest bands on the planet. And it's the, it's the disco um, craze that they have managed to ride all the way up until that point. But as disco then moves towards um, house music, it moves towards dance music and also moves towards hip hop, even though Earth, Wind & Fire are so important they don't seem to be able to keep up with that there's a there is a there is um an echo i think of the sort of show band that is the only thing with earth Wind, and fire um on this album there's a studio track comes in and i don't know if it was remixed later but the groove is like this distorted bass groove i think with like a, and I, it comes in and it's unbelievable what the hell is this there's a few times on these albums where they seem to go dark. Earth, Wind & Fire go dark and these dirty, gutsy things come in. And you go, what's this? And then suddenly click and we're into... Which I love. But I think towards the end of the 70s, they needed to harden up a little bit. They, they needed to... That it's it's same thing happened to um, uh, Cool and the Gang, you know. Um, you know, early 70s, we've got Jungle Boo, you know, all that incredible heavy funk. And then, you know, by the end of the uh, 70s, they were having hit records, but they were having hit records um, with things like Ladies' Night or Celebration. Because it's Ladies' Night. Uh, and that, you know why that's a hit record, because um, certain women that maybe don't go out that much, but, you know, every now and then they get all their mates together and they go down the nightclub. Now, um, when I was a kid, we used to call them the handbag brigade because here in the UK they used to have their handbags so they used to put their handbag down in the middle of the dance floor and they dance around it to call the gang because it's ladies day and for the fears all right oh boogie wonderland although boogie wonderland is a work of genius isn't it <laughs> that, that, the vocoder thing and they pick it in it's just unbelievable unbelievable September. That's the other. That's the other um, track that is on the greatest hits records. If you don't want to know where that September 
It's one of the greatest songs ever made. It's so funky, and yet it's not James Brown. It's, it's, it's incredible stuff, but I think there's just a little bit of the... Sh what's the word? A bit of the Las Vegas show band about them. You know, these bands, of course, came out of group like Argentina Turner, and it came out of groups that won the Chitlin Circuit. These, these musicians put on a show. They put on a show, and Earth, Wind & Fire had an incredible show, a Federal Light show. I mean, if, if you get the Greatest Hits um, album, and I'm never going to be able to pull it out and see and just see if it is just straight there in front of my eyes. This never happens. Oh, my God! I found it! So here's my Earth, Wind & Fire Greatest Hits album. This is an essential album. <laughs> Got to get you into a live, live fantasy, Saturday night, love music, get away. That's the way of the world. September, Shining Stars, Reason and Sing a Song. These are all brilliant records. And if you open it up, you see this beautiful um, visual representation of Earth, Wind and Fire. And the thing that always fascinated me about this album is this photograph up here. Where's my camera on this? New thing? You see, that's Verdin White play live. What the hell is going on there? What the hell is going on? Look at Phil Bailey. Phil Bailey can't believe it. Um, do you want to know what I think my my favourite Earth, Wind and Fire song is? I'm going to try and find out which album it's on. It's off all in all. And it's so funky and it's called Jupiter. And Jupiter is about an alien that's come from the either one of the moons of Jupiter. It's come from Jupiter, which is absolutely ridiculous because obviously Jupiter is one of the large gas giants and there's no actual planet to come from. It's just a big ball of gas. You know, if you if you um, were to descend onto Jupiter, you, you, any living thing would be crushed. Although you could have some sort of entity that could live, I suppose, on Jupiter. Um, but if they came to Earth, it, that environment that i mean because they would have to withstand this huge gravity and 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 exist within this pressure this pressure cooker that is jupiter so i always assumed that these this alien that had come from jupiter had actually come from one of the moons because it's quite feasible that you could live on one of jupiter's moons couldn't you and they come to earth to sort of spread the message of love and the funk and um as much as i like serious songs I am a sucker for a song like that and, and the way they pull it off and the amount of work and effort and incredible composition, you know, to bring us this story that is absolutely preposterous, I absolutely love. Anyway, I wanted to keep this one short because I've got my new camera. I don't quite know how it works. I've actually got an iPhone, and not, and, and a new modern iPhone, which should make me make my videos much easier because uh, it means I can just film them and then upload them because I have to do a lot of prep on mine. And I, I think, I hope this uh, looks better and I hope the audio is okay. I don't know what I'm doing. If it's bad, if the audio is bad or something, I'll sort it out, but I'm still putting it up. That's the way it is. You get to see whatever's going on. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've given you more than I normally do this week. This this should be on a Tuesday, or I want this series to be on a Tuesday. The reason it's on a Wednesday is because I have the Narada Michael Walden interview, which is absolutely mind-blowing, and I've never done an interview like that, and I've never edited an interview like that, and I wanted that to come out on Narada's birthday, so that came out uh, yesterday. This is on Wednesday, but next week it will be back on Tuesday. And then this Friday, I've got something really big up my sleeve. Um, we're going to go for one of those big videos, the ones that everybody loves, where they come on and they can't stand the fact that I uh, dare to criticise a band they like. And I'm wondering what band, what band? Put it in the comments. We've done Pink Floyd. I've done Queen. They weren't so bad. The Queen lot weren't so bad. They, they, they had a reason. They go, oh, yeah, I love Queen, but... The Pink Floyd bands, they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it, do they? They don't like any criticism whatsoever, do they, the Pink Floyd fans? So, um, yeah, I, uh, I've had a knock. I've, I've done with, I love Pink Floyd. I think they're great. Uh, I've done with having a go at them. So what's the other band, do you think, that can't take, can't take a bit of prod in? I think I know what it is. I've been there before, and I mentioned them earlier. It's Steely Dan. 
Steely Dan fans, they don't want the, the legacy and brilliance and genius of that band. These people that sit there worshipping at the altar of Larry Carton, you know, there's a certain grey-haired YouTuber um, that, that I am nowhere near in the same league of, but he's a little bit like that. He hears he towards, um, you know, the Steely Dan worship. I've known a lot of musicians that do err towards Steely Dan worship. I like Steely Dan, but I've never got that sort of, um, you know, religious disciple thing with them. So um, I might I might have a look at them. I've got a lot of ideas boiling around at the moment, but I am at the end of the video just wittering on. Uh, and uh, there's nothing more to say, is there? Really, we are done. I hope you enjoy this video. Oh, look at this. Sheik's poking his little, little Sheik. <laughs> little Sheik's poking its head out. In this video I'm doing on Earth, Wind and Fire, Sheik's been in the background going, I know you love Earth, Wind and Fire, Andy, but what about us? We're funky. We've got all the compositions. We've got the nice chords of the production. And in, in, in a way, we did exactly what Earth, Wind and Fire never did because what the, our grooves were the ones that, 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 that hip-hop's built upon. And that legacy enabled, you know, um, Bernard Edwards and Nile Rodgers to then get pulled onto all these incredible 80s albums. And, and Nile Rodgers was, you know, did you know, let's dance, and then he's still there now working with Daft Punk, and he's become, you know, he was able to do that thing that Earth, Wind and Fire didn't do. Chic, they were, and they poked their little head out in the background. This is another album of genius, you know, genius, and I love it when an album, when a band puts their titles on the front cover as though, this is a new album coming out, and you walk in and go, ooh, look, new tracks, ooh, I'm checking them out on the cover. Because uh, I need to... Oh, they've got a track called Chick Cheer. That's a cool track. I might buy this album. Happy Man. I'm a happy man. Dance, dance, dance. All three dances. I might do that, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you win. Yeah, philosophical, right? You can see it's philosophical because Bernard Edwards, having a, he's having a little read of his, his... He's probably got a bit of John Paul Sartre in there. Anyway, I'm just whittering on being silly. That cover's awful, isn't it? Looks That looks like the rear, the back of a co album. But that's actually the back. Oh, aren't they wonderful? Chic. I love the funk. This is the only problem with this series, is that um, I love prog and classic rock and jazz, but if you're in the car with me, it's probably funk I've got on, so I'm going to have to go and explore some other stuff. I don't know what I'm going to have a listen to next. Anyway, we are now at the end of the video. If you like this video, please like it. Um, if you want to see more, you can subscribe. If you want to support me, and uh, believe me, this is, I felt confident <laughs> to get this big expensive phone to do my YouTube videos on because of the support I'm getting from my patrons who I love. Thank you, patrons. You are all the best. And also all the lovely people who put um, tips in my tip jar. And the big thank you goes to MJ Martin. You know who you are. I know who you are. You have got me through this year. So thank you so much, Martin. And I know I, 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 if you think I'm not noticing it, I, I am seeing it all the time. And uh, um, I just wanted to say that publicly in front of everybody. I hope you're all happy. I hope you all um, feel positive. Stay positive. Um, Try and help everybody. Try and see people's other point of view. Let the other ideas in. And let's all try and get on because the world needs that at the moment, doesn't it? Uh, thanks for watching this video. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.